um, I'm zooming in from um, the land of the Boon people and I want to acknowledge Boon elders past, present and emerging. Um, and I also invite everybody with us to consider the elders of the country that you're on and pay respects in your own way. Um, I also want to acknowledge that for every single one of us, we are all on sovereign Aboriginal land. Um, and finally, I want to acknowledge and recognise any First Nations people who might be with us in our Zoom or who, who might be joining us in the gallery. Cool. So, um, I, oh, would our, would our speaker like to introduce themselves? Hello, yes, um, I am the speaker. I am obviously a member of Task Force. So we're just going to have a good old debate today, I think. Lovely. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And um, with that, I'm going to be in the role of uh, Sarah and Paul. I'm going to be our clerk. So uh, I now uh, would like to introduce the next order of the day, which is uh, the bill titled Increasing the efficiency of public bus systems in Ballarat, sponsored by the Y Ballarat. And speak, I throw to you. Thank you. I call on the sponsor of the bill. Speaker Honourable Member Simmons. Over the past two years, Ballarat has grown in population and city size. Ballarat is also the third largest inland city in Australia. Because of this, public transport in Ballarat needs to be improved. Over the past two years, our team has been doing extensive research on ways to improve transport in Ballarat. Although this bill is based on Ballarat, it can also be used in other regional cities. This covers multiple areas of public transport that can be improved in Ballarat. The first area I would like to talk about is the GPS tracking. GPS tracking is already installed on some buses, but not all buses. The GPS tracking system software is not optimized for current for the current smartphone app, and is not and is also not uh, accessible for all users with disabilities. For the next area, I would like to talk about increasing capacities of buses in Ballarat. Ballarat buses are during peak times can be busy to the point where users must stand up. Stand up. This makes socially distancing particularly hard during the pandemic. Increasing capacity of buses will allow for more users on buses and also will allow for social distancing. The next area I'd like to talk about is establishing the Office of Improving Bus Services in Ballarat. This is needed at the moment as staff from the Department of Transport have to come to Ballarat to assess the buses and their routes. This doesn't happen very often as Ballarat, as Ballarat's Department um, of Transport has its office so as, as the Melbourne's um, Department of Transport has its offices in Melbourne. Transport in Melbourne having offices, sorry, I got a bit confused, having offices in ballot services, having, of, having office of improving ballot services will allow, make, will make it a lot easier for the Department of Transport to determine which bus routes need improving. I would also like to talk about the express routes. Over the past five years, Ballard has grown. This is because of multiple reasons. One of these reasons is because of the continued improvement of the train services on the Ballard line, allowing for people to get to and from work in the city. Ballard's government local area covers 740 kilometres squared. There are also buses going in and out of the Ballard government area. So having express buses will allow for users to get from point A to point B faster. I will now go over what peak times are and when they are. Peak times are, are times of day which roads and services are busy. Research shows the following times are 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for work and schools. The mornings are the busiest times of day, whereas afternoons doesn't have such a dramatic peak. The afternoon peak is from 3 to 4 and to 5 to 6. Making Barrett services, making the bus services more refined will encourage more users to, to use public transport, uh, thereby decreasing cars on the road and allowing more people without licenses to, licenses to have independence. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. Um, I now call on the main refuter, Honourable Member Dayo. Speaker, the Honourable Member Dayo. 
This speech will mildly discuss suicide and may be challenging or triggering for some people. If they feel concerned about the content, youth parliamentarians and members of the gallery are encouraged to step out or mute their volume and return in a few minutes time. I'd like to begin by highlighting that the bill to increase the efficiency of public bus systems in Ballarat demands an unnecessary volume of resources, including infrastructure and labor. Clause eight suggests that an efficient bus system requires GPS tracking for each individual bus, as well as bus timetables on screens with additional casing. Now, does GPS tracking really increase the efficiency of the bus system, or does it only allow commuters to be able to identify where exactly each bus is? Furthermore, Clause 4.3 demands an abundance of skilled labor in order to implement the GPS system, GPS software, accessibility changes, and maintain the quality of the bus system. It is unclear where the Office for Improving Ballarat Bus Systems will obtain the accessibility team, maintenance team, development team, and technical support team, or if they will outsource this to another business or even hire and train new staff. With all these changes being implemented, what exactly will maintenance look like? The sponsors have obviously overlooked the process of maintaining this bus system above all things. There is no mention of whether or not buses will be assessed regularly. If they aren't assessed regularly, are they only going to be maintenance when something fails? Subclause B of clause 4.3 states that the, ma the maintenance team will be responsible for fixing damage to buses. Damage to buses can occur in a number of ways, one of which is not being serviced regularly. This further increases the risk of accidents, which does not guarantee safe travel for passengers of the bus. Clause eight briefly mentions inspections of the protective casing. However, the bill does not mention inspections of the buses, which is one of the most important processes in maintaining a bus system. The absence of bus inspections in this bill demonstrates that there are even flaws in this bill regarding the requirements for keeping a bus system to a high quality and standard, as well as safe for passengers. How are the sponsors confident in a bill that has such inadequacies? All of this labor and technology is simply an inappropriate allocation of resources for just Ballarat. It has also come to my attention that regional areas, including Ballarat, would benefit more from things like improving mental health services and education. The suicide rate in regional Victoria is 40% higher than that of metro areas as stated by the ABC. Furthermore, the age highlights that there is a significant achievement gap between regional Victorian students and metro Victorian students. This further contributes to unemployment in regional Victoria. Mental health and education certainly appear as priorities for all regional areas, rather than focusing on a bus system that is currently doing its job. Not only is this an inappropriate allocation of resources in Ballarat, but it is also an inappropriate allocation of resources in Victoria. Victoria is clearly expanding as a whole along with its population. The fastest growing suburbs and towns in Victoria over the past five years included new housing developments on the fringe of major cities, including Aintree, 30 kilometres west of Melbourne and previously part of Rockbank, and Lucas on the outskirts of Ballarat, as well as more established regional suburbs, including East Geelong and North Geelong, according to Domain. Therefore, resources for public transport need to be distributed fairly across both Metro and regional Victoria. Metro Victorians also face issues regarding public transport due to traffic, delays and roadworks. Most of us simply choose to leave at earlier times in which we reach our destinations on time. It is unbelievable that residents in Ballarat are reluctant to adopt this adjustment just as Metro Victorians do. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Member. And I call on the Honourable Member Vernon. Speaker, the Honourable Member Vernon. Transport emissions have had the highest rate of growth in any other sector since 1990. With no action, transport emissions are projected to continue growing to 2030 
to create such irreversible damage and harm. Now, to imagine the population of Ballarat, roughly 101,000, to start using the public bus transport system more. Statistically proven, public transport uses less energy and harmful carbon dioxide than having every person in Ballarat drive day after day. It also contributes to less air pollution, which can make the beautiful sky of Ballarat clear, clearer and cleaner. It is also known that one of the easiest ways to reduce your transportation footprint is to use public transport. An individual can save up to $9,000 purely using public transport and also knowing that while you're saving money, you're also helping the earth. This is a big benefit to a person's conscious. The transport emissions in Ballarat would drop dramatically thus paving the way for more transport services to be at use in other towns in Victoria and even start to be the lead in other states and territories. Let's turn Ballarat green again. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call on the Honourable Member Campitelli slee Speaker, the Honourable Member Campitelli slee the increase in the efficiency of public bus systems in Ballarat Bill 2021 proposes the creation and maintenance of an abundance of new infrastructure in Ballarat within a very short period. Clause 2 states that the bill shall commence upon receiving assent from the Youth Governor of Victoria, meaning the evolution of Ballarat's bus system will begin as soon as this bill has passed through the legislative process. How did the government believe that the Office for Improving Ballarat bus services will be established under the Department of Transport Victoria almost immediately. Wouldn't the, cons the consolidation of relevant task forces and PTV bodies require a greater period of consultation with the Department of Transport Victoria and the Ballarat community than what this bill sets forth? The opposition acknowledges that some renovations may be needed to improve regional bus systems, yet not to the extent suggested by the government. The commencement date must be pushed back for at least several months to ensure that infrastructure planning, community discussion, provision of staff and associated construction is not rushed and therefore done poorly. How do the government believe that the significant upgrades concerning the implementation of GPS tracking, articulated buses, express routes and multiple technical support teams is a process that could be undertaken without comprehensive groundwork being done to allow such renovations to be undertaken accurately? If the government wants to make public transport more efficient in Ballarat, they need to understand that it cannot be done in the timeframe they are proposing. It is impractical and it will put unnecessary strain on the local people of Ballarat. The government should amend the timeline for implementation of infrastructure to allow these renovations to go ahead properly. If the increasing the efficiency of public bus systems in Ballarat Bill 2021 is to pass. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on the Honourable Member O'Connell. The Honourable Member O'Connell. There is a need for efficiency and an upgrade of bus services in a number of areas in Victoria, with Ballarat hoping to be the main contender of this change. One of the ways in which Sorry. One of the ways in which our government can improve Ballarat's bus services is by creating various GPS tracking systems for buses to increase accessibility and inform our people on the status of, of buses and transportation as the current system is incredibly lacking. GPS systems are necessary in Ballarat and to increase even more accessibility, they can go as far as being accessed via an app on smartphones to allow Victorians information on bus services. We as the representatives of Victorians also need to take into account that the transport in Ballarat is limited and the transport we do have is intended for metropolitan areas, while links to Victoria, regional Victoria are slim. This heavily contributes to the issue at hand and a need for an upgrade in legislation, also bringing to light that Victorians don't have any other forms of transportation and so are reliant upon this rundown system. Technology is in fact an inevitable growing part of our future and without techno technologically advanced systems put in place for rundown bus services such as Ballarat's, it will severely affect our people who, as I said, are reliant upon this. May I also add that proper GPS systems are put in place to help Victorians and without them it can potentially put them in danger due to if individuals were escaping dangerous situations and didn't know where transport was coming from or when they'd be there. It could, they could potentially be hurt. And as far-fetched as it sounds, GPS tracking systems can save lives. 
Victorians need an increased bus service, and that includes GPS tracking systems to help keep them informed, safe and content with new and improved services. So I ask our government, will we commit to improving bus services in Ballarat in order to create a safe and more secure system? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Member. And I'll call on the Honourable Member, Reginio. Speaker, the Honourable Member, Reginio. While we do recognise the issues that the people from Ballarat may have with the public transport in the area, however, the strategies stated in this bill are simply not the way to go about the issue, that is, of their public transport. By increasing the amount of buses being used and producing more articulating buses will merely be a massive contributor to Australia's emissions of greenhouse gases to this earth, which, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, is already at 1.5%. This will only further fast-track climate change and destroy the environment for future generations. The government should instead be focusing on other modes of transport to assist the people of Ballarat to get around the area through either buses that are electric and environmentally cleaner or through walking initiatives like the Walk to School initiative, which is an initiative from Victorian Health that encourages kids in particular to develop active lives. Investing in walking initiatives like the Walk to School program can reduce the amount of supposed congestion surrounding buses in many areas, including Ballarat. This initiative can contribute to reducing Victoria's carbon emissions. According to transportvic.gov.au, the department already has electric buses in dispatch, which in the first one's first 300 days on the road, saved 61 tonnes of carbon emissions. Why was this not stated in the government's bill? Another amendment could be of solar powered bus stops Victoria wide to further reduce the amount of fossil fuels being used. While yes, the initiative stated in the bill would be helpful in increasing the efficiency of public transport in Ballarat. However, throughout the time of these infrastructures being implemented in the area would only increase the amount of difficulty to these already supposed difficult transport systems. The amount of people having to travel by cars would increase making it more dangerous for young people to travel throughout Ballarat and surrounding areas. The opposition implores the government to take our concerns into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call on the Honourable Member Saunders. Speaker, the Honourable Member Saunders. The government would first like to mention that bills do not contain statistics, rather offer solutions to current problems. I implore the Chamber to consider for a moment the differences between metropolitan and regional Victoria, in particular how public transport is used. In metropolitan Victoria, it is easy to catch any variation of public transport services to reach any particular destination. Personally, I have a train, bus and tram all within 10 minutes from my house. Compare this to regional Victoria, in particular Ballarat. Buses are less frequent and there's only one train station. Any other way of getting around is personal. This is why it's essential to improve Ballarat's public transport system, particularly the use of buses. Metropolitan Victoria has a pre-established system set out by the Bus Services Act 1995, among other legislatures. However, this legislation does not take into account the different circumstances noticeable in regional Victoria. Fewer bus services, but more separation, separated destinations does not make logical sense. Therefore, regional Victoria should have its own legislation regarding bus services so they can operate efficiently in ways that are different from Melbourne. That's what this bill aims to do. Ballarat is so different from metropolitan Victoria and different again from other regional cities across the state. As such, it is necessary to differentiate Ballarat in our state's legislation as well. This bill will offer Ballarat a level of autonomy in how it operates its bus services to provide the best service to its residents. Ballarat residents know best how their city operates and therefore they should be provided the legal means to benefit their own area and people. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call on the Honourable Member Hackett. Speaker, the Honourable Member Hackett. Speaker, I'll begin by pointing out that Ballarat is a rather large place, a regional city of sorts. 
rather than implementing even more vehicles to clog up roads and slow the traffic even further, should we not be looking at simply upgrading what is already being used? Government, I would like to ask, is it even responsible to implement such a strategy now that so many people work from home as a result of COVID-19? According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, only one in seven people are using public transport these days, down from one in four people. How can we justify the cost, the time taken to implement that will likely put people out of their way, the materials and the ongoing maintenance of a whole new public transport system when it's clear that people simply are not using buses anymore? May I also point out the ageism riddled through this bill? A whole new GPS tracking system implemented in buses and only available through the use of technology is simply not accessible for a lot of our elderly citizens. I'd like to ask the sponsors, who most uses public transport? Young people and elderly people, that's your answer. Members of the House, I wonder why the sponsors of this bill think it's okay to implement a system that would be completely unfamiliar and even potentially stressful to half the population likely to use it. Another question I'd like answered by the sponsors is, what happens when this technology inevitably fails? In the case of a power outage, for example. Ballarat has some incredible walkways and bike tracks. And frankly, I do believe, like Honourable Member Vernon stated, that we should be supporting and investing in greener solutions. So why not upgrade and maintain these alternative solutions before we begin changing a whole system that may that many people are already comfortable and familiar with using. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call on the Honourable Member Asita. Madam Speaker, the Honourable Member Asita. With the proposed changes in legislation pertaining to the increase in efficiency of the public bus system of Ballarat, the advantages and changes in the town will serve as an example of the potential of other Victorian inland cities and areas. Key objectives within the Transport Integration Act 2010 established a strong imperative for achieving a coordinated public transport system. Specifically, these include that the transport system should facilitate network-wide efficient, coordinated and reliable movement of persons and goods, as well as seamless travel within and between different modes of transport. However, the Victoria's Department of Transport has failed to achieve their objectives in Ballarat and many other inland cities. There have been numerous public strategies and action plans created and discussed. However, Ballarat and many other towns alike have not seen the benefits these plans have proclaimed to produce. The Ballarat Integrated Transport Action Plan, for example, is a major strategic approach to meeting the future transport needs in the context of a growing regional city. Unfortunately, to say the least, action plans like these only delay the inevitable and strain the already exacerbated resources in towns like Ballarat. Currently, public transport, <clears throat> currently public transport uh, to and from Ballarat is limited to regional links to other regional town centres. Most of these towns, including Beaufort, Ararat, Skipton, Elaine, Meredith, Criswick, Borland, Bacchus Marsh and Mountain, take 60 minutes or less to get to and from by public transport. Most regional communities most regional commuters live in rural locations requiring them to drive to stations in order to use this public transport. How simple is the need for more systematic buses within Victorian cities like Ballarat? Why are there new railway installations which are funded $2.3 billion by the Australian federal government a focus when there are already roads and streets which cost only a fraction of that to recondition for the needed buses? Furthermore, how are you supposed to get to these stations when commuters already drive their cars, even though it's a public preference not to. Speaker, Ballarat will set the precipice of legislation reform for towns and cities respectively. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call on the Honourable Member Garcia. Speaker, the Honourable Member Garcia. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that the increasing the efficiency of public bus systems in Ballarat Bill 21 is working towards increasing the effectiveness of buses within Ballarat. However, the opposition believes that Clause 6.1 will prove problematic if the bill was to move forward. This clause states that OBS will remove less popular bus stops along major routes during peak times in an effort to implement express routes. 
If the new express route is meant to save time, then why, why are bus stops being removed? Shouldn't there be enough time to pass by these stops as well, especially if fewer people are getting on? These are just a few questions the opposition thinks the government should take into consideration for this clause. A key point that is missing with clause, with clause 6 is how exactly OIBS will determine what constitutes a stop to be popular. Is it determined by how many people use the bus stop during peak times? This is unclear and needs to be defined within the bill. If popularity is decided by how many people use a certain bus stop, then this still raises issues as it is unfair to remove even a single person's only mode of transport in favour of the majority, especially, if, especially in the sparsely populated regional areas in Ballarat. For example, the population density ranges from a low of 0.04 persons per hectare in Ballarat to rural west to a high of 12.7 persons per hectare in Ballarat Central. That bus stop may belong to a parent trying to take their kids to school or an elderly person trying to buy their groceries. No matter how little the bus stop may be used, it could be someone's only mode of transport and this should not be taken away from them. The opposition proposes a survey to be taken of how the community of, Bal of Ballarat may feel about removing certain bus stops before this bill may become law to ensure that no person is denied accessibility. Overall, the opposition believes that clause 6.1 should be revised before any commencement. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member. I would now like to call on the honorable member Cook. Uh Speaker, the Honourable Member Cook. Uh, sorry, I, I can't find the hand raise button. There it is. Uh, I I would like to point out that this this if we implement it now during COVID nineteen, when not many people are allowed to go out, it will make it a lot easier to implement rather than after COVID nineteen is over and restrictions are lifted, where more people are likely to take public transport. Also, as, as someone that takes public transport on an almost daily basis to get to university, I certainly think it would be an improvement to know when specifically the bus is arriving at the bus stop rather than having to guess, given the fact that it can arrive five or ten minutes before or after the time that's stated on the paper, on the paper timetable. And what about regular people that just want to go and get groceries? If if they arrive just a few minutes late and the bus is already gone, then they're going to have to sit there and wait for another 40 minutes before the bus can come around again. And what if they arrive too early? They're, sit they're sitting there waiting, not knowing if they've missed it or not. Having this GPS system would be a lot more reassuring and comforting to people to know exactly where the bus is and exactly when it will arrive. That is, that is all for now. Thank you, Honourable Member. I would now like to call on the Honourable Member Jewel. Speaker, the Honourable Member Duong. I'd like to touch on the fact that if the efficiency of buses were to be increased, the public transport of Victoria should prioritise all of Victoria rather than just Ballarat itself. As briefly mentioned by the government, the Australian Bureau of Statistics states that there were at least 150,000 people in Ballarat by 2016. It is understandable that Ballarat does not have as many services as metropolitan areas. However, it is not necessary to increase the capacity of bus services as stated in clause one, as we are not able to conveniently nor fairly implement a system overall within a slow locale in regional Victoria. Also, make sure to consider the safety concerns of increasing the capacity while decreasing the number of bus stops. What if there were too many buses driving past each other? It would then be more likely to collide against each other. What, we, what will we have to do if many buses are produced and then suddenly damaged? Also, how would the implementation of buses vary throughout Ballarat? Is this more relevant for aiming to increase the efficiency for bus services for Ballarat as a whole, or just the CBD? Wendery and Ballarat CBD are the most densely populated areas within Ballarat, having at least 10,000 and 100,000 residing respectively, whereas single country homes and small villages have less than 1,000 residents. Furthermore, we should also consider prioritizing poorer suburbs and regional Victoria. 
Suburbs including Moa, Corio and California Gully have some of the highest poverty rates in regional Victoria, with at least 20% of people living under poverty in those areas, according to the Victorian Council of Social Service. This means that it is more likely for people in those areas to utilise buses as they are a more affordable means of transport as compared to owning and buying a car. Shouldn't those who are more reliant on the public transport be the ones our state looks to benefit through upgrades and renovations? The opposition thinks so. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Member. I would now like to call on a speaker from the government, uh, the Honourable Member Co. Speaker, the Honourable Member Co. The opposition has attempted to point out flaws in the um, Ballarat um, Improvement Buses Bill. However, their attempts in doing this include practical examples that exhibit fear mongering within the chamber. They have cited bus crashes during peak time as an example of what could happen if buses were to increase. However, this is simply impractical and unrealistic. During peak times, you do not see hundreds of car crashes on the freeways. Um, furthermore, they have um, stated that these buses are unneeded due to the fact that Ballarat is a um, wealthy area um, in comparison to other country towns. This is true. Um, we do not deny this fact. However, due to this fact, Ballarat is expanding. And with the urban sprawling, um, this, the towns are getting wider. And in saying so, the bus um, and transport systems must accommodate this. Um, during the 2016 census data, 19% um, of the Ballarat population was over the age of 65. We must consider the fact that elderly populations are less likely to drive due to health reasons and not being able to afford a car. Are they, are they no longer to go, um, are they no longer allowed to go outside due to not being able, um, due to not having a car? Can they no longer see their friends um, and meet their families due to not having accessible public transport. By not having this bill passed, we are preventing families from seeing each other and we are preventing people from living their day-to-day -day lives. Um, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you, Honourable Member. I'd now like to call on a speaker from the opposition. If you would like to speak, raise your hand. We'll wait a few seconds if anyone would like to speak. Speaker, if I could just jump in. Um, don't forget everybody in this chamber, there's lots of arguments in the Discord channel that have been put in there. So you can just raise your hand and read those aloud if you like. But it would be great to have somebody to have somebody stand up. If you can't raise your emoji hand, you can put it in the chat and I can call on you. No takers. Shall we move on? Okay. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I would like to call on the sponsor of the bill for the right of reply. The opposition has stated that removing bus stops and also removing um, and also decreasing the buses. This is not true as you're not, de you're not removing bus stops, you're implementing express routes, which are bypassing some stops, not removing the stops completely. This is, this is uh, a good thing because it, 
bar is expanding quite widely. So in order to get to point A to point B the quickest, it would or or, or quicker, um, it would be it would be very, very handy for um, bus services to have an express route so they can go to point A to point B quicker. They also stated that it were ageism, they were ageist. Um, that's not true because there is screens in the bus stops that were stated in the um, bill. The screens would allow for the tracking to also be live on the screens. So that is also on there as well. Um, that is all, thank you. Thank you, honourable member. Um, so the question is that the bill now be read a second and third time. All those of that opinion say aye and to the contrary, no. I'll give you 10 more seconds to get that vote in. Okay, I think the eyes have it. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Um, and the bill has now passed the Youth Parliament. Amazing. So exciting. Congratulations, Ballarat. Can we give them a, a round of virtual applause, please? Amazing. Another incredibly um, successful debate and a huge congrats to Ballarat. Um, particularly congratulations to Alex and Seth who are here repping their team and a huge thank you to everybody who stepped up for Ballarat for today's debate. Um, because it's because of you guys that uh, they were able to have this debate and that this bill was able to be passed. So um, really, really appreciate that um, show of support for your fellow youth parliamentarians. Massive congrats. That was a such a good debate. I don't know if, uh, if Miura, you have any feedback. I don't think I have any. I think it was just phenomenal. Um, yeah, I think it was groovy. Um, all I can say is please stand up after the six speakers and contribute if you want to so we get the debate rolling and keep going so it can reflect what it's normally like as much as it can be. Um, but other than that, you guys smashed it. You all smashed it. I loved it all. Awesome. The only other reminder that I might do is just uh, to remember to address the speaker before you do your speech. But other than that, you absolutely killed it. Speeches were fantastic. Arguments were really, really high quality. And there was a lot of exchange in um, the Zoom chat with interjections, lots of support in there and heaps of um, exchanges in Discord as well, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see. Um, I want to echo Miura's sentiments as well, that um, even though it's tricky, we really, really encourage people to stand up when the floor is open. We saw a really good example of that in this debate when it was the government's turn. Um, and I know that it can be really hard. And that's why we have um, examples of arguments that you can give in your Discord channels and in the spreadsheet. So I can only encourage you to take that on. But the difference that it makes is that for one thing, debates go on for a lot longer. And also, you know, we've all worked so hard on our bills and they are fantastic. They're such high quality. You're talking about such important issues. And on behalf of the training team, we have loved working on those with you. And when they get put into debate, that's when we get the chance to test them. That's when we get the chance to see what all of you have to say about it and to see how strong your bills are and what they can really withstand. It also gives the chance for the sponsor team and the sponsor chamber to really push and argue for their bill. And it's clear from all of the votes and all of the passing with flying colours that we've seen so far that majority of the bills are being supported by majority of our youth parliamentarians, which is so wonderful. One way that you can show support for a bill is to stand up and speak if you're on the refuting side, to speak against it, to give the sponsor side a chance to speak for their bill. 
So for one thing, it's great practice in debate, but also you're doing your fellow youth parliamentarians a huge favour by standing up and speaking. And that's why if you stand up for just 10 seconds and just read out a dot point that somebody has sent to you, or just even reiterated somebody else's point, you know, it's, it's worth doing that because you're giving your uh, sponsor chamber and everybody here the chance to not only extend on the debate, but also extend on the strength of their bill. So very much encourage everybody to give it a think. You all have copies of the bill, so it might be worth in the break reading through the upcoming bills and having a think about what would you say if you were going to sponsor or refute this bill later on, and then think about how you might be able to contribute to that debate. Jot yourself down a note, and when the floor opens up, just raise your hand and read it out if that's all you feel comfortable with. But also everybody who's spoken so far has exhibited debating skills of the absolute highest quality. So um, if you want to just go off, you're welcome to do that too, always. We have a question. What's up, Michelle? Um, I just wanted to uh, continue off with what you said with in terms of people speaking up. Um, you don't need to have like a quote unquote speech as eloquent as mine. I have a lot of practice over many years. And in the very beginning, I was very, very bad, like very bad. So it's like, even if it's just one point, feel free to say it. And it's like, remember that in this space, when you're debating what, um, in terms of when you're on the opposition or when you're speaking on the sponsoring bill, um, the points that you're saying, they don't necessarily have to align with what you personally believe yourself. It's just something um, to support your current party and to help the bill that's currently going forward and keep the exchange going between um, the teams. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, I totally agree. And Charlie, did you want to say something too? Yeah, no, um, two things, just really quickly. Um, everyone did an amazing job, it was really well. And I think a big congratulations should be for Alex and Seth, because you guys are incredible. And I know it was really, really tough, but you all did very well. Um, Casey, if you could please contact me, that would be great. But yes, everyone have a lovely break. Awesome. Um, the only other thing that I might just ask you to cast your minds back to, if you don't mind, is um, the and I have referenced this a couple of times, but I think it's really